Now, John Kennedy is a puppeteer who's performed on various Muppet projects since the early 90s, and he's with us here just now. How are you today? Hi, Toby. I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing smashing, thanks. Great. Now, you're what's often described as a utility puppeteer, where quite often you're doing lots of different characters on a day-to-day basis. So what's that like? Do you sort of enjoy the un? predictability of it i really do you know it's kind of like mission impossible i come into work and i don't know what i'm going to be doing (laughs) most of the time anyway and of course you do have a regular character mumford the magician don't you i've been doing that since uh a couple years now anyway Mm. jerry nelson's character from the early days of sesame street and you know it was my favorite character i loved you know Mm. the a la peanut butter sandwiches and and anything to do with magic. I was a big magic fan as a kid, so <laughs> that just sparked a, a, a chord with me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's perhaps such a big dream to end up performing one of your favourite characters. Exactly, it was a dream come true. Yeah. It's like my whole career has be- has become a dream come mm. true, actually. Yeah. Everything I get to do, I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this because I trained for it since I was a little kid to do it. And then yeah. to get to do that is just amazing, even today. Now, do you remember what your first exposure to puppetry actually was? Uh, I remember in elementary school back in uh, at Brentwood Elementary in Plainfield, Indiana, yeah. uh, there was a marionette show that came through, and I thought that was the coolest thing. Yeah. And then Mr. Rogers had a, a marionette builder, a marionettist on his show, and I that was, those I saw it was a rabbit character, and I just thought they were the neatest things. And so I asked for a, a little puppet. I got a, a Pinocchio marionette, uh-huh. you know, the Disney version, and uh, got to uh, play around with that. And so I always, you know, I would mess up the strings every time. So <laughs> it kind of got discouraged. <laughs> but yeah. then I saw the Muppets. I saw Sesame Street now on, on TV. My neighbor had it because you had to have a special antenna mm. at that time to get it on your TV to watch the, the I think, the UHF uh, channels. And and uh, they, you know, that's the only way you could see PBS in our area. So I begged my parents to get one and then I could watch Sesame Street. I think I might have missed the first season or maybe half the season, but the uh, mm. first one. But uh, I was totally into it. Yeah. And you actually started building your own puppets at quite an early age, right? I did. When I was uh, three, I asked my mom <laughs> to make a puppet for me and she said she didn't know how. So <laughs> I figured, well, I guess if I want to do this, I'm going to have to do it myself. So I just... <laughs> started you know this journey of how do you i mean i would be sewing foam rubber together i didn't know Mm. about glue you know i'm i'm seven years old and i'm carving foam uh and you know as i got older i was i was experimenting with different materials and anytime i could see a magazine where you know like the muppets were building something there was a magazine life magazine that had uh you know behind the scenes of miss piggy and they were building miss piggy in the workshop they were showing her body and you can see like some of the glue and stuff on the rack and i'm you know i'm studying that with a magnifying glass what kind of glue is that and what kind of foam is that and look look at all these patterns and you know, you just I, I, the only thing I could, uh, the only materials I could come across was a little five and dime in Plainfield that uh, called Danners, and they had, you know, maybe a, a four foot section of crafts. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I guess it must have been quite hard to find out exactly how to make a puppet, especially the age of three, where I think a lot of kids wouldn't have really had that intelligence at such an early age to work out how to do it. Well, you know, my first puppet was stapled together so (laughs) i'd used whatever i had (laughs) yeah and do you still have some of the puppets you made as a child i do have a few of them yeah i put Mm. them in an old trunk and uh they're kind of stinky but (laughs) i still have them (laughs) and have they sort of started to deteriorate like some puppets do or if you're not using them does that not happen as much well uh you know year after year i would look at them and go okay i'm gonna pull these out someday and just Mm. clean them up and 
after a certain amount of time, I'm, I just got afraid to look at them. Like maybe they're toast. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I haven't looked in there in that, in that, uh, in that crate for a while. So oh, that'd be weird. I don't if know. You just look and they've vanished. Just <laughs> dust that's left. Or, or maybe they came to life. You know, oh. there's a whole show there, right? <laughs> yeah. I think we've got a good idea there. That's totally not been done before. <laughs> oh, I know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Were your parents particularly creative growing up my mom was uh my dad also but um you know they were more sports fans than anything uh they yeah. came from uh french lick indiana which we would go back and visit that's where um Larry Bird is from, mm -hmm. and my parents loved basketball. Being from Indiana, you know, so my we had a basketball hoop in our backyard, and my dad was a hunting and fishing man. Uh, however, you know, the, the the art side was in the family. His brother, my uncle uh, uh, Paul E. Kennedy, uh, mm -hmm. he was the art director for Dover Publishing in New York for thirty years. He built harpsichords and would paint murals on them, and uh, it's, a lot of his harpsichords are out there in uh, orchestras around the world actually wow so <laughs> that side of it and he he sent me sent me my first box of foam and uh fur from new york he, he went to, uh, to the garment district or fabric district in new york and bought a bunch of stuff for me and shipped it to me and it was that was like gold <laughs> it was like yeah. how because you can't get this stuff you know i had to go find you know like the the long the, the long jump or the pole vaulting guys had busted a a, 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 a like one of those pads that they land on and some foam had come out and like puppets <laughs> that's how i got my foam <laughs> yeah and how did you go from this young child building puppets to actually ending up working for the jim henson company as a performer uh you know i'm kind of a determined guy I, you know mm. i set set goals for myself uh, and and i know they they may not happen you know but <laughs> but uh you know i always i always said that uh success happens um when preparation meets opportunity. So I thought if I could just get to the right spot and I'm prepared, you know, maybe it can happen. You know, and yeah. I, I say that to everybody who wants to do anything, you know, if you, and, and I, even today, I, you know, there are things I want to do and, and I, you know, I'll write songs and I'll write the stories and I'll figure out what they're going to be. And I, and I may not be able to, to, you know, do that right now, but, but maybe in the future. And I had read Jim Henson used to do that too, that he, mm. he had, um, you know, his ideas and things, those things turned into the movies later in his his life you know yeah. and so i just you know i just wanted to to do it so bad i started my own program in high school i mm. and even elementary school i i was doing uh live shows and uh it's just I said, well what do puppets what do, if i'm gonna be a muppeteer i gotta learn how to sing so i better take voice lessons so i started taking voice lessons in junior high and uh, did that all through high school i sang and did a, and i said well they puppets need to dance yeah. so i better learn to dance so and that, all these things came into play then you know in yeah. in later and in, in everyday life on the set of a sh of a shoot you know a character might need to do a dance or play an instrument I, and mm -hmm. you know kermit plays the banjo i better learn the banjo so i i learned that when i was a kid wow. and uh and i still play and i still work on these things juggling that's another thing well, puppets might juggle i better learn yeah. to juggle <laughs> and so i still do that i juggle for puppets on the set in fact there was a show recently that had a juggler in it and then I had to be, uh, I had to put on the furry hands and do the juggling with, yeah. <laughs> with my above my head that's the hard part as a puppeteer you, it, it's easy to well, if you learn to juggle you can just juggle right in you know chest height you know right in front of you, you can see see them you know land in your hands or for a peak above your head that kind of mm -hmm. thing you can keep them going but you got to put your hands up over your head there was one point when i had to help the swedish chef yeah. um on a show called donna's day i had to juggle eggs over my head you know because the chef has a live hands, so it was my hands so it was easier to juggle you have furry hands on forget it it's hard to juggle that way yeah. <laughs> but, but i've had to try to do it and i've helped elmo juggle and wow. um on helpsters recently i did some juggling and so it's always there it's, i've always got these things i can surprise people with i love to surprise people with things i can do so yeah did learning most of that stuff actually help
help though because I suppose dancing for instance a puppet dancing is completely different to what you do as a human dancing because it's all in your hands isn't it and it's a little bit limited as to what you can do with a puppet it is um well you'll see like when Elmo dances full body um he's got uh you know we're all in these blue or green yeah. suits and we got rods and stuff and so it, some of the same techniques that you know as people would dance can be used as they dance the puppets can dance the same way and you want it to look more authentic yeah. you know when you're just got your arm above your head and the the playboard is you know above your head or the bottom of the frame and um you're you're dancing around with just your arm and some arm rods you know you can you know of course you're faking that you're like okay the arms can do something and i do that too sometimes those there some of the puppets have live hands mm. and so they'll say john get in both hands you know and then we'll do some choreography you know and well you can do all all the things that i would do with my hands i just have to you know change the orientation of framework of the body you know and that's all what puppeteers do anyway but if yeah. you've got some more information beyond just keeping it looking alive or you know balanced within the frame if you say well the puppet can do this and the, you know you can show the director a few moves they'll go oh yeah do that you know so yeah. that's when it comes in handy makes the the main performer look really good so yeah <laughs> i get i get yanked and you're helping me you know <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I play guitar like Rosita. Sometimes I'll play Rosita's guitar. I just put the guitar sort of on my head, put my hands in, in both live, you know, hands of the puppet. And uh, and then and a lot of times it's like the track just came in. So you hear the track once or twice and then they roll. So it helps to know a little in it. You know, puppet faking the, the instruments is different than if you're really playing. But if you can make it look like at least you're sliding to the next chord at the right time, and maybe there's a couple notes that you can fake that are higher at the end. Da, 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 da. You know, there's some kind of a finale. And if you can give that flourish and do it right on the beat with the music, you know, you just look for those little things that, that you can emphasize. And, and you kind of do that with puppets anyway. You're emphasizing a certain movement that the puppet does well. Yeah. And when you first put a puppet on, you're like, what does this puppet do well? Okay. Oh, I can do this gag. I could do this. I could do that. And you just, and then you know everything else from years of working, like how the, you can put that in the frame and where you should go and place with other characters and but then if you can you know bust out and do that move you know and it, it, you'll get a laugh and you stand out you know mm. do you remember what the first project you worked on with the jim henson company or muppets was uh well it was at uh disney world the mm. at the time the uh, disney mgm studios i i got to finally work and meet jim henson at uh, the, this commercial for the show that I was in, the Here Come the mm -hmm. Muppet Show. Uh, everything kind of came together for me where, uh, you know, I had auditioned in Indianapolis and they re relocated me to, to Florida. And there I was, you know, right in the middle of the Muppets and I was ready. I had all my gags and all the practice I'd done. And some of, I had done a couple workshops in New York to get into it, you know, to try to be a part of the Muppets. And they had just said, well, if you're where we're working, we might use you. You know, they, mm. you know, they weren't going to say, yes, you're hired, you know, <laughs> but, you know, because I you know, hadn't done anything yet. So I had to get somewhere. So the Florida thing was just perfect. They, they auditioned me, Disney auditioned me in Indianapolis where I was working as a, a singing, dancing, banjo playing puppeteer at the Indianapolis Union Station. And wow. just across the street at this hotel is where the auditions were. <laughs> it was just <laughs> like perfect for me. So. I just, everything was like a perfect storm. It all came together and I'm right there meeting Jim Henson yeah. and uh, it's, we're on New York street outside. And he says, you're, you would be perfect for this first shot. Go over there and talk to the director. And the director said, oh yeah, yeah, we can we be this crash and we need, you need to get in this ice cream cart. You're just the right size. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I, you know, being a dancer and everything at the time, I, you know, was in great shape yeah. and I could squeeze into this ice cream cart on the front of a bicycle and uh, uh, they had just taken the dry ice out. So it was freezing inside, <laughs> <laughs> taking the popsicles out. 
or an ice cream. So, uh, and I was lowering myself down in and there's a little metal edge around the inside of it. And, oh. and then thought to like sand that down. So, cause no one would reach up in and under like mm. I am trying to lower myself into this thing. It's just the size of me too. So it, it, it's like a magician getting in one of those boxes that, that you know, escape act, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm getting the knees are up in my chin. And as I'm lowering myself down, I have to turn my shoulders and my head to get in. And then I, I felt the pain, all, this raw sheet metal on that metal edge um, cut all my fingers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I had to have Band-Aids on all my <laughs> fingers. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't like they nearly cut my fingers off or anything, mm. but I was bleeding on every finger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> that was my first job. But they said, let's initiate the new guy. Yeah. And so that, I, that <laughs> and I was so lucky to get to be a part of that because I was like the last person to join that group, you know, the Muppets mm. as they were at that time. You know, everybody was there and I was the new guy. And just a couple weeks later, Jim Henson passed away. So if I hadn't got in and been in with that group at that moment, I wouldn't have been considered for other things coming up in the future. But um, yeah. probably because everything was in disarray then and it was hard to get into an audition and so i'd kind of set myself up not knowing you know and i at the time you know jim asked me you know do you do any you know character voices or characters and um i said well i do a lot of your characters yeah. <laughs> and you know i ran through a few of them and and he wasn't impressed <laughs> but uh steve whitmire said hey that's a pretty good dr teeth <laughs> and um i was doing i was performing that character like uh in the show i was a part of that character character you know with as, as the disney characters and so uh in that show so uh you know i've been practicing it and i could kind of, i you know as you know a younger kid i would try to pick out all the muppet voices and try to do all of them also so i would be mimicking all of them and that became something that i was good at later as well that they used me for but at that moment that character sounded good to steve and he said hey that's a pretty good dr teeth and he remembered that after jim henson passed away the next show needed a a vocal put in where you know where because jim wasn't there anymore and and yeah. uh, so they asked me to come in and try it so i tried it and and um later on i found out it was in the show wow. <laughs> so <laughs> for 15 years i got to do that kind of stuff you know where i get to do some of jim's characters and and uh, then later some of frank's characters when he wasn't around and you know all of it you know i never uh got credit you know for any of that and yeah. and that to me that's part of being a utility puppeteer you know if it if, mm -hmm. if i got credit for it you know it'd be one thing but to not know was like my secret you know you, and if i pulled it off and nobody realized it you know i did my job yeah that's the thing i suppose is a lot of your work sort of substituting for performers because most people know that one performer can do two characters and they might be in the same scene together so you'd need somebody like you perhaps to fill in for them exactly there's um several ways uh, to do that and one mm -hmm. One is that if the performer is there uh, performing character in the same scene that his other character, her other character would be in, also um, I would put the other puppet on and then they would do the voice live. So we'd work yeah. it out, you know, like, okay, you're, you're going to do this part and then this line is going to be you and here's how I'm going to say it, you know. Mm -hmm. Or it might be that I would say it and then later they would put the, the vocal in, you know, in, in post yeah. uh, over the top of me. So I might just whisper it you know or i might just mouth it or whatever you know whatever makes sense you know for the shot it's always something different the other way is for um someone uh to be in the playback you know my good friend uh, chris sasano on sesame street he's the playback guy and he has all the cues laid out and maybe you if the person is not there the main performer if eric jacobson is not there mm -hmm. and there's oscar stuff that they're doing and is he does that voice now and yeah. there's the puppet and care whole character but uh you know when he would play that vocal down and then they would you know he would watch you know within the scene where it needs to go and i you know i when i start to move chris is on it he's uh on it uh see what they call him chris, on it Cesano or something <laughs> chris chris Cesano <laughs> is on it and he just boom he hits it right at the right moment and wow. uh it's it's seamless and you would no one knows <laughs> <laughs> i think there's been a couple of times in muppets things i'm not sure about sesame street where another performer has done the character and done the voice mm -hmm. where it's meant to be dubbed later but they've just forgotten so you hear yeah. like D 
Dave Goals doing Rezo or something like that. <laughs> exactly. That that happened to me with uh, Mumford also. Mm. Uh, th- there was a Halloween special and uh, Jerry couldn't be there. And so I and I did that quite a bit for the Count and other characters too. Then he would loop later. Um, and they just forgot. There's this yeah. one shot where I'm on the phone, I think. Uh, Mumford's on the phone and, and it's just one line, you know. And I guess they just didn't realize it. And that like, yeah. yes, they didn't. <laughs> didn't realize it was the same it was a different voice <laughs> do you secretly hope that that happens sometimes <laughs> not really <laughs> it's, it's always embarrassing when they do it like oh i hope yeah. nobody noticed that <laughs> yeah because it is different i'm not i'm not perfect at it mm. you know nobody can be I mean, he was a genius at vocals and and mm. character you know, creating characters and doing character voices and he did so many and i was just honored to even be his you know friend you know know him <laughs> all of them you know it's been like that for me it's just like you just pinch yourself that you know these are my heroes and i know them, <laughs> I know them. Yeah. and we're going out to dinner now <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like what's happening you know we're yeah. working together and it's you know day to day and you for at some point you kind of forget you know like oh that's that's jerry and that's mm. that's dave and you know and then you go oh yeah when i first started i was like singing songs and and doing their voices back to them and they're like Do we have to work with this guy <laughs> <laughs> but you know you gotta be cool you gotta be cool yeah and you mentioned earlier about when jim henson passed away very shortly into your career yeah and we could look at the negative side about how you didn't really get much of a chance to know him but i suppose you were quite lucky because if you'd have joined even just a little bit later you wouldn't have got the chance to meet him at all would you that's right you know i had uh, music scholarships i turned down and i just said i i want to do this thing i've been you know Mm. practicing and getting ready for this my whole life and you know the thing was i, I kind of got caught up in you know in music and you know singing and you know and, and people who had fostered you know me and mentored me wanted me to continue along that route you know like you you should do this just you know you're 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 being naive just go to take take the scholarships and go to college and then mm. you can do the puppets and my parents were like you you, know, you got to have something to fall back on you can't just go and do this thing but you know yeah. i like i said i'm just kind of stubborn and like no i'm gonna do it <laughs> uh, you know i'd heard my my dad you know he was you know miss mr sports you know i had to be home to watch the games and everything and but i always heard you know this uh sort of you know sadness in his voice when he said i always wanted to be an actor you know and he had a, a thousand bad jokes and you know he always he was a really great storyteller and you know he always wanted to be in a film or do you know something on tv or be an actor he loved those old west movies and stuff he really wanted to be in one of those i think <laughs> <laughs> but but um uh i would listen i would hear him you know and he he did you know like the most mundane job you know he was like yeah. did tax kind of stuff you know for the state of indiana and i mean not that that's a bad thing to do but i mean yeah. just that to, he it wasn't what he wanted to do is what yeah. i should say and it wasn't his idea of you know this is my dream come true but he did have those dreams he just suppressed them to do the right thing and be the family man and bring the you know home the money and you know that kind of stuff and i I, I kind of resisted that path, you know, because I, I thought I really felt like I could do it. You know, I really yeah. and I want to give myself that chance so that in in later years, I wouldn't look back on it and be like that. Like, oh, if I'd only I knew I was right there. And if I hadn't just if I hadn't gone and done this, you know, I, I could have could have been a puppeteer. I could have been on Sesame Street. I could have done those shows. And, you know, I, my persistence paid off because, I, mm. you know, I was just in the right place at the right time. And, you know, it's hard to. I've, I've seen other puppeteers since then you know come in like they find that wave where you, there's a spot for a new puppeteer you know and they come in and it's really a lucky spot to be in you know you know that's not always there it's not always a place for everybody so you know you gotta you gotta totally prepare and be ready and then and just wait for that moment to shine so that's what i did yeah absolutely and one of the things you worked on with the muppets was muppets tonight and 
I heard a story that mm -hmm. a particular celebrity nailed a puppet to your hand. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> <laughs> he he did. I don't think he ever knew it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it was just happened so fast that I I had this. Uh, prawn puppet on my hand and i'm i'm in between uh jerry nelson and dave goals and we've got those mm -hmm. uh you know lobster characters with with the little guns and everything and <laughs> we're firing <laughs> these things off and and pierce brosnan is in a prawn suit and mm -hmm. he's got a slingshot we're wearing hard hats too down below because he's mm -hmm. using this giant wooden slingshot to to fire a, a metal alarm clocks at us wow. and uh, they're bing, doing, doing, <laughs> off our helmets you know <laughs> these real metal things that could hurt us wow. and uh and we've got these guns going off pew, pew, you know, real <laughs> like real gunpowder in there <laughs> no bullets obviously but uh, like the cap guns you know and um, mm. and he, he runs out of those uh, 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 the alarm clocks, and he just starts hitting us. And my character had it was the character you know uh, Richard Hunt, who who by that point had passed away, unfortunately. Uh, but he he was I was in his spot. You know he had that yeah. character before on the Muppet Show, and so they had the well big wig on it, and all these pins were holding the the wig into the top of the prong and uh, the little lobster. And uh, when he came down when pierce came down with with that slingshot that heavy wooden solid wooden slingshot he hit me hard and it mm. pushed one of those big head you know like a hat pin basically or a t-pin right through my knuckle <laughs> <laughs> through my hand <laughs> And I didn't know what that that had happened. Obviously, I didn't know there were pins there. I didn't know it. I just he just went bam, and I brought my hand down, and went, he broke it. He broke my hand, uh, and I started moving my fingers. Well, they move, you know, and there's still chaos going on. <laughs> They're still shooting, and I'm like, ah, my hand. Um, let's see. Oh, it feels weird. Something felt really weird, and then I started to pull the puppet off, and it wouldn't come off. <laughs> started to, and then I I kind of panicked, and I just went, oh, and I, I pulled my my hand out and i could feel the pin come out of my knuckle wow. <laughs> it must have just slid you know slid right through the cartilage or something because it didn't cause any damage mm. uh it was bleeding a lot so you know i ran off and someone helped me um and then sent me off to the emergency room <laughs> to the, at the nearby hospital to, and uh, that was a weird one to tell, you know, yeah. the triage nurse what had happened, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, Pierce Brosnan uh, <laughs> put a pin through my knuckle with a, yeah. you know, while I'm wearing a puppet, you know. And um, but what was weird was I'm telling this story and it sounds terrible, you know. Wow, through your knuckle and all that's really there is a tiny pin prick. It looks like <laughs> yeah. by that time there was no blood and my hand obviously wasn't broken. It didn't bruise. Uh, <laughs> I was just the luckiest puppeteer in the world at that moment because uh all they did is you know i think they gave me a tetanus shot and then i went right back to work and went right back into a scene and finished the day out yeah. you know puppet in air <laughs> what is it with you you keep getting injuries to your hands and fingers <laughs> that's right i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst place for a puppeteer to get an injury isn't it it is and I, i'm i'm always escaping you know near disaster <laughs> <Yeah. you> know? <laughs> i just i near the other day I almost got my hand, you know, my finger in a drill press. So oh. <laughs> that oh. cut my finger a little bit and it's back, you know, back to normal now. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing wrong. But, uh, you know, I just like... I don't know what it is, but I got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and as well, in Kermit's Swamp Years, uh -huh. a straight-to-video film, uh -huh. you performed Arnie the Alligator, and <laughs> that puppet is quite big. And I wonder, is it hard to perform a bigger puppet? Can you still do that with just your hand? Because it's a big mouth, isn't it? Well, um, you know, you have ways of coming in to the puppet in different parts. So, uh, mm. like, like a normal, uh, like a above your head or you know puppeteered below the frame kind of a shot you'd have you know somewhere at the waist or the butt you know you'd have to have the length full length of the puppet you could imagine would be the length of your arm but on arnie you'd come you came into his body on the side so i'm kind of yeah. i'm kind of got my shoulder up behind him on a board and um so i'm kind of up close to his his jaw line anyway with my hand so uh really the hardest part is just keeping your body contorted sideways and your head down and yeah. you know 
know, your elbow and your arm out and up on top of that board, you know, to, to, to perform it, you know. So, and, and he, I think it's kind of a cheat. I mean, the real Arnie the Alligator from the Muppet movie, I think it was just kind of a, a prop, propish kind of Muppet because it yeah. really was like moving through the water, being pulled through the water and they made it look big and, you know, <laughs> ominous. This <laughs> Ar- Arnie the Alligator is going to get you, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, in, in Kermit's Swamp Years, it was, he was a little bit smaller and I think they just played with camera angles to make uh. him look bigger, you know. So it, <laughs> it wasn't as menacing as... <laughs> <laughs> just at the beginning you get the shot of the mouth and it's scary and then oh he's not so scary yeah. <laughs> i was lucky to get to be on that i was puppet captain and oh, yeah i uh, got to play a uh, blotch the bullfrog and so that was fun to be the the bully you know and uh, so <laughs> it was like it was a fun one to do except the heat yeah. the heat was it was really hot in florida and we really were in like a swamp it was it was terrible <laughs> and that's quite a fun film actually because there's so many fun bits it sort of gets forgotten about doesn't it i think there's the young statler and waldorf in there as well at one point yeah you know, cinema. yeah <laughs> yeah it's really fun there's a couple of turtles that uh yeah. <laughs> that go back and forth in the pet shop and there's some oh, yeah. good music in there and yeah, I don't, I don't know why, you know, that it must have done okay. I don't know. I, but uh, it was fun to do. And yeah, it was, yeah. and it was in, you know, I've, I've lived in um, Winter Garden now for a while. And that's where we shot it, Winter Garden, wow. Florida. A lot of the streets, the Jim Henson house was there in Winter Garden, Florida. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so my puppet workshop was there too. So it was really cool to be right there and just walk outside my workshop and go work for the Muppets. It seemed impossible to be yeah. happening. And in the pet shop as well, there was cool names for the food, I think. It was Salmon Friends was one of them. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was throwing those gags. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Lewis is, it was the writer oh, yeah. on that. And he's he's one of the main, you know, gag writers uh, for the Muppets, you know, with uh, uh, Craig Shamans, the other one. Those two guys are back and forth, you know, what what's this, what joke should we do here? And, what you know, yeah. they're really funny when they get together too. Yeah. There seems to be a common thing in the Muppets. Sometimes the performers get to have cameos as just random background people. And you were in a scene on the beach in Muppets from Space, weren't you? I was, yeah. I'm the the low point of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody's giving up on Gonzo. Yeah, yeah, sure, your family's coming. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so so I'm like, I'm cold, let's go home. You know? (laughs) And then I got to dance, you know, and then yeah. what's funny i was thinking you know and i was about to come on to talk with you i was thinking about all these uh moments where i, I got to dance or show you know <laughs> choreograph something or and what, what always ends up happening is you dance and you dance and you dance i mean it's like a whole half day or maybe a whole day of dancing <laughs> uh and they had a uh, break dancers and all these professional dancers there and the the movie I think was way over in time. So they had to cut everything down. The only dancer you see in the whole scene is me. I do one (laughs) hitch kick, you know, (laughs) that's it. (laughs) After all that dancing, like, I don't know how much weight I lost that day (laughs) in that potato suit I was in. (laughs) And Peter Lins has his classic line. I believed you, man. Yeah, I know. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) It was all a big surprise. And you know, the reason that it happened, uh, Brian Henson was telling me that uh, we we had sort of a you know like a party a cast party mm-hmm. uh, at one of one of the houses that the puppeteers were staying in and Bill Beretta had videotaped me dancing at the party and he, and mm-hmm. basically I was just doing every little move I ever had done in show choir and at uh, the Union Station in Indianapolis and I was just throwing them all out there and just sort of a hodgepodge of every kind of crazy move and. You know, and I'm you know, at this point, I'm I'm not a really fit guy, so yeah. <laughs> it, I just looked funny doing all these things, and I would just go into the next one, and jam into the next move, and jam into the next, and none none of it was cohesive, or you know, it just all these weird little things, and I just took over the whole place dancing. He videotaped it and showed it to Brian, and Brian said, "Oh, we've got to get these guys in here, and he's got to dance," you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that kind of came by uh, came around because of me <laughs> being yeah. a, a goof <laughs> yeah and you've released some of your own puppet making books haven't you i have uh puppet mania and puppet planet are the two yeah. uh books that i uh wrote and that just came about as uh you know someone just emailed me and said hey would you like to write a book and and i'd been thinking about it which was weird that you know mm. I, it was another thing you know where you know preparation you know meets opportunity and it's like boom yeah i'm ready <laughs> I, was just, <laughs> I was ready to do it somehow um i had tried to pitch a book with one particular kind of puppet making thing because mm. i had when i was um uh seven i had come up with this style of folding foam over uh and using that as a mouth almost like um like if you uh, took a slipper and and folded it over and the sole of the slipper became the mouth of the puppet you know i've, see, I've heard a lot of puppeteers puppet builders you know say they started that way but yeah. uh i folded the foam over and then carved it out and put slots for my thumb and my fingers you know so uh I knew I had that one, but that was too advanced for the first book, you know, but I had, I'd kind of put together um, a project book of like what I had done when I was a kid. I, it was sort of experiments. And that's what the book's sort of uh, detail is, is how I came up with each one of the projects, what it meant to me and how I performed it. And um, and so I, to me, it was when I was little, I, I would go to um, oh, like an elementary school, I, I would go yeah. to the public library and I would try to find any puppet making books, you know, and the, they're just, they're really weren't any you know that would show me what i wanted to build which was more like a you know muppet kind of puppet you know and yeah of course there's a reason for that they you know it's a trademark thing <laughs> as i find out later you know you you can't make a muppet because the muppets are the muppets and you know they yeah. make the muppets so i you know, you can make puppets. So, uh, and, and so in trying to make Muppets, I made puppets. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> I was not so good at it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the experiments that I did really helped me understand and helped me perform, you know. So mm. I sort of I come at it from more of a puppeteer uh, view than, than, than a puppet builder. You know, I'm not, yeah. it's just, I'm, I'm making puppets accessible to kids. You know, here, here's how you could take a sock and make a puppet you know in in the way that i did it when i was little and uh, i had a of a dancing bird puppet which is a lot like mm. uh, the dancing puppet i had at uh, union station i called him i called him string bean he just had these you know long ropes for arms and legs and then i put cones of fur on so I, I did a small version where I just did a paper plate, put fur on it, put a beak on it, and then did two s strings um, for the legs and put fur cones on it. So I give the pattern for the cone, how to make a cone. And I'd show how to hot glue everything together, but you can use other kinds of glues if you're, you don't want to use, um, you know, something with high heat, you know, if you're, I always say have a, a parent help you. You know, but yeah. that, that started a whole other thing, which was doing workshops for kids. Suddenly I was, and I became a professor at, uh, at um, University of uh, Central Florida for a semester wow. before, yeah. until I got another puppet gig. I was like, well, I got to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I finished the semester out and, and with some help and, and uh, taught other people how to do, you know, puppet building projects of their own to teach other mm -hmm. people, which is really all I wanted to do was inspire people to make puppets that kids could make you know or make yeah. puppets to perform for kids you know so i i really don't it, uh, some people have said well aren't you concerned that that people are making your puppets and and using them for shows and things and I'm like mm. no i mean that's really why i did it you know i just yeah. want to inspire i want that kid to go into the library find my book and go that's what i wanted to make and and now i can do my show you know which yeah. is so it was really helping myself out if i could go back in time i'd say here here's the book right here kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah and as well as all this puppetry stuff you've got your own band haven't you the johnny k band <laughs> That's right. Uh, you know, at, at some point you you just goof around and and write songs. I, I got put a I took a ukulele with me everywhere on location on Muppets from Space and uh, another oh. puppet puppeteer uh, Drew Massey. Uh, he and I um, we we started writing songs in the car driving to all these crazy locations around uh, North Carolina. 
And we just came up with songs and silly things. And then Steve Whitmire got in the band playing keyboards. He's a really good <laughs> keyboard player. And and then, you know, one of the sound guys was a bass player and he helped us out and he knew a <laughs> drummer. And so by the end of the of the show, we had a whole band together and we played at the rap party. So <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> And um, Brian Henson said, that is the weirdest mu- music I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> or strangest, I forget what it was. But, uh, <laughs> was. but we just did all this silly stuff and it was so much fun. And we tried to put an album together. But, you know, when, when you're all there working together and you're every day in and out, you know, you're coming up with these things. It's easy to, to put a song together. But one, yeah. once everybody goes back home and everybody goes to Atlanta and Florida and L.A. and it was just impossible to to put it back together again. So I had all yeah. these songs and ideas and things, and I really wanted to do something with them. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, so I came up with other. My wife uh, Julie, she she uh, worked at a psychiatric center, um, and uh, you know, "Walk the Loop," which is the song that, uh, that the album's named after. Uh, it's really about uh, the labyrinth that she would teach um, at, at, at the psych- psychiatric center. You you walk around and, and and by the time you get to the center and then back out again, you it's sort of like traveling the path of life and you kind of realize things about yourself and get your head back together, you know. So and kids would do it and, you know, adults would do it. And it just seemed like something that everybody might do. So I could I could put it on a kid's album. And I just describe basically what she would would do in teaching that class that day you know yeah absolutely and for your puppetry career Mm -hmm. would you say you've got an overall highlight well you know working at disney world meeting jim henson working with him um that i mean that was my first two days and i don't know (laughs) (laughs) it's it's there have been a lot of cool moments uh still i mean not not much tops that you know Mm. (laughs) it just you know, I loved Disney as a kid. I couldn't believe yeah. I was there, you know, go through Disney University and and uh, learn a whole character department. And, and then they trained us to perform Muppets. <laughs> so wow. it was like, whoa, that's amazing. We got, you know, the yeah. whole, all the catalog of all the videos. And, and, and they had, uh, Jim, and I think you can see some of these online, but yeah. Jim Henson had created uh, uh, sort of a series on the characters and how how they came to be, and that was all just for us. You know, we were able to wow. look at this catalog of of him telling us about the characters, and and it was very weird because he you know wasn't there anymore. You know, but uh, <laughs> um, and very sad, um, very sad time. Uh, you know, I was just physically ill. You know, at the wow. whole thing because he had said you know. Uh, he was, uh, you know, looking for people down there. Had heard that, and you know, and later, like seven years later, uh, I found out from from Jane Henson uh, that uh, he had, she had asked him, you know, Jim, what are you going to do down in in Florida? You don't have any puppeteers down there. Um, and Jim had told her, uh, well, we'll be okay. John Kennedy's down there, and I had sent him my video. He had sent, I had gotten a a, a letter back, you know, day, just a couple of days after he had passed away, that that he. He had seen my videotape and wow. and that I was on file and they might use me and you know and so it was just like all my dreams come through and then uh, come true and then boom mm. that came down you know and um, it you know it really affected me but to, to know you know years later that he would have used me you know I would have been a part of it you know it, yeah. it, it was a well, bittersweet obviously but it really was like he was talking to me you know in a way yeah. He finally I finally heard what he thought of my tape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so hard time. Is there any projects coming up for you that you're allowed to talk about? Well, you know, we we just uh, finished, uh, you know, Helpsters, like another mm-hmm. season. I think I can say that. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's all been so top secret. Every it's so weird, you know. I I just kind of got out of social media because I'm I was afraid, you know, I was going to show yeah. something or. You know, it's all so top secret anymore. Anything we're doing, you know, I'd done, you know, I had done the Julie's Green Room with Julie Andrews. I played Toby, Toby the dog. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> and uh, um, we couldn't say anything about that. It all had to be. So you're like months and months of just secrecy and never can't tell anybody. Yeah. Um, I've been building a lot of characters right now. I haven't been doing much uh, beyond that last season of, of Helpsters. Uh, but um, I've, I've been building puppets for a lot of Christian-based shows uh, mm. in Nashville and Atlanta. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know what ones I can mention anyway. So <laughs> because I shouldn't say anything. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, oh, there was one called Slugs and Bugs. That's been yeah. out. So that's it. it. We finally could announce that. You know, that was one that in nashville with uh, ricky boyd i don't know if you know ricky oh, yeah. boyd yeah. he's he's a long time friend and, and muppet performer he got in before i did you know he was wow. uh, the new one of the new guys and he might have come to florida too i think he told me that 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 uh he was asked you know would you be interested in going to florida and moving there you know from nashville so i think yeah. we might have been friends at that point if it, things had continued but <clears throat> but um yeah uh that's about it i've got too many other things happening right now I'm, I'm working on my own stuff and trying to get uh you know always trying to get a show going or another uh a workshop here or there or, you know but not, nothing big right now yeah ricky boyd he was on the beach with you in muppets from space yes, he was wasn't he? he was there too he was next to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had some kind of a crazy hat on i remember yeah. but uh beanie or something <laughs> yeah but um, yeah, he, he's he was really he was in um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, which at that mm-hmm. time it was right before I, I came to Florida, and I, and and right when I uh, that was coming out at that time, I was like uh, so amazed by that movie, and 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 then those turtle heads were at the audition for Dinosaurs, which mm-hmm. was like the next big thing I worked on. So I guess if there was another thing other than working with with Jim Henson, it was working on his, one of his last. Projects projects that he envisioned which was dinosaurs yeah. and and so you know Ricky was was there um, it, it, that was a magical time being out there in LA so I went from in one year I went from uh, Plainfield Indiana to or you know Disney World in Florida and then LA Hollywood you know California <laughs> and all this stuff had happened to me and we were like a number one show or number top five show anyway for dinosaurs so it was yeah. it was unbelievable that this all this whirlwind of things that happened to me like yeah. all my dreams came true and it really was that you know my i had promised my mom you know that if i couldn't make it as a puppeteer by a certain time that i'd come back home and go back to college <laughs> and so <laughs> it really was it was like see i did it <laughs> you yeah. can't get any bigger than this <laughs> yeah well where are we able to keep up to date with you everywhere i've got a website uh puppetkit.com i don't have many i don't have any puppet kits on there anymore but <laughs> uh at some point i might <laughs> yeah. but uh i just you know i have some of my videos that i put up there that, of my music johnny k band and um i may change that over to something else soon it may yeah. go under construction to, to be something else but uh yeah. yeah i might get back into um doing more you know workshop kind of stuff so yeah. that's what i'm going to emphasize now yes and just as we go i think i'm gonna stick on one of the songs from the johnny k band okay is there one that you'd like in particular oh gosh strength in numbers i always love that song i know it's just mm. got a, a peppy beat to it but uh puppet man's good too yeah. <laughs> but uh strength in numbers i just think is such a strong as i love the way it trails out with all the instruments and stuff we had a really good time you know doing that song okay uh, recording well, it we'll stick it on then yeah okay many thanks for joining us today it's been very interesting to chat to you oh thanks thanks toby for having me on